Welcome to Mikon's hardware. In my previous video I have tested Juan Andre B660M Mini IDX motherboard. And in this video I have a cousin of that motherboard, but this one is Micro ATX. So this is a very similar motherboard, but it has Micro ATX form factor, means it has more connectivity options. Just like for the Mini ITX version, I have unboxing video with a quick specs of review of this 100 B660M Plus motherboard on my secondary channel. In this video, I'm going to focus on the most important parts of the motherboard, but as always, you will find all detailed specification as well as all my test results by the end of the video in my slides. First, I need to mention that after my B660M ITX review, Huananji contacted me and decided to refund my payment for the motherboard. Still, this B660M Plus motherboard is still purchased with my personal money and I'm not sure if they will or will not refund me after this review. For this review, I have also got my printout with the most important points for this B660M Plus motherboard, and all in all, the motherboard is very similar to the B660M ITX version. They also use identical BIOS, and the only difference is that we have slightly different VRM configuration, and the Micro ITX version obviously has more connectivity. So, with VRM, we still have the same 8 phase controller and we still have 10 pairs of MOSFETs, but this time we have a double for each pair, which means that we have 5 phases or 10 phases, depends on how you look at it. Nevertheless, the VRM performs exceptionally well, testing with i7-12700K, using 8064 stress test, running in for about half an hour, I could not find a single spot on the motherboard that would heat up for more than 60 degrees Celsius. Additionally, I would like to mention that the temperature sensor and the power consumption sensor on the motherboard are working fine, and you can monitor these values using the HW monitor or some other monitoring software. Apart of ADA64, I have also performed my Cinebench R23 runs with i7-12700K and i5-13400. In both cases, the scores were almost identical compared to the Mini ITX version of the motherboard, and it means that the scores were just a bit higher than what we can find in the public online reviews from reputable sources. It is also the same thing with the radiators. I do not recommend touching them because under the radiators you will find a very fragile thermal pad and once you remove the radiator the thermal pad will be destroyed and you need to replace it with something else. The next point on my list is the PCI Express configuration. Of course, we have the standard PCI Express X16 slot that works at PCI Express 4.0 speed, and yes, resizable bar works, you just need to enable it in the BIOS. So a part of this X16 slot, we also have X4 and X1 additional slots. These two additional slots are connected to the chipset, and they work at PCI Express 3.0 speed. Both of them are working just fine, but the power delivery is not enough to power up NVIDIA GT710 graphics card. I have a special NVIDIA GT710 graphics card that uses PCI Express X1 interface, so I can connect it to the X1 PCI Express slot, and unfortunately, the power is not enough to power up this graphics card. Nevertheless, simpler devices such as Wi-Fi adapters or M.2 SSD adapters are working with no issues. So this is not a big of a problem, just something you need to know. Compared to the Mini ITX version, we also have one extra M.2 slot for SSD drives. Here we have two M.2 slots and both of them are PCI Express 4.0 X4. But the first one that is close to the CPU socket is connected to the CPU. The next one is connected to the chipset. Thus, if you use only one SSD drive, I recommend you installing it into the first M.2 slot that is close to the CPU, because then you will get better performance. And we also have an M.2 slot to install Wi-Fi expansion cards. Unfortunately, this M.2 slot supports only Intel CNVI Wi-Fi adapters. If you install a PCI Express M.2 Wi-Fi adapter in this slot, you will not get Wi-Fi connectivity, only Bluetooth will work. A few more additional notes about the motherboard. In my previous video, I forgot to mention that Huanangji B660M ITX and B660M Plus have got debug LEDs soldered onto the motherboard. So these LEDs indicate what is the booting status of the motherboard. If you have some memory issues, CPU issues, or GPU issues, the motherboard will stop there and light up its status, so it is very easy to debug. 
I'm very pleased to see this feature on Huanangi motherboards. I just would like to see these LEDs to shut down or turn off once the booting process is completed. I don't see a reason why these LEDs should be lit up once the booting process is completed. Another rather sad point is that B660M Plus supports a smart fan functionality for two fan headers only. Here we have got three fan headers instead of two fan headers compared to the mini ITX version, but unfortunately the smart fan function doesn't work for the third header. This third header works at 100% rotation speed all the time, regardless of what fan you connect, and you cannot monitor it using software. This could be because Huanangri is using the same bias between mini ITX and micro ATX motherboards, and thus uh, this functionality is simply not present in this bias. Lastly, I have also checked undervolting capabilities or CPU voltage reduction. B660M Plus and B660M ITX do not support undervolting of the CPUs. Testing with i7-12700K and i5-13400, I was not able to adjust voltage of the CPU. Uh, there are some settings, but the CPUs are simply ignoring these values and keep operating at the standard voltages. Overall, I like B660M Plus motherboard just as much as I liked B660M ITX version, and the motherboard also gets 8 out of 10 score from me. Personally, I prefer to have micro ATX form factor because it is not as big as ATX and it is not as tiny as ITX. And with micro ATX we have much more connectivity options, and that's exactly what we have with this Huanangri B660M Plus motherboard. Right now on AliExpress you can buy it for 9210 euros, and if it would not be so complicated to do business with China, I would even consider to buy a bunch of these motherboards for my budget gaming builds for sale. But we have what we have, and I have just this one sample, and I plan to use this sample to build a white PC where I plan to add TNUE AMD RX Vega 56 graphics card that is also white, and that I am expecting for a review from AliExpress. With this, I have to say thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting, and I hope I have helped someone. Bye for now.